hi guys how are you guys doing today so i have a word for you guys i received a scripture this morning from god okay like literally right when he gave me the word he gave me the scripture i don't remember um exactly what verse it is but i know i read it in first corinthians and the scripture goes something like god will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear he will help you get through that temptation right so he will never let you get tempted beyond what you can bear god won't tempt you the enemy will tempt you but god won't allow you to go through temptation beyond what it is you can bear and god will also help you get out of whatever situation that you are in where you are being tempted right but Although God is going to help you get out of that because he is so faithful, your heart, your heart also has a role to play in you getting out of that temptation as well. Your heart and your motives has a huge role to play. See, if you have faith in God and you have a good heart, your motives are good and you're a good person, trust me, you will be able to get out of that because the devil will try to tempt you into being bitter, into being cold-hearted, into being mean, into being vindictive, into wanting to do evil. But if your heart's in a good place, your mind's in a good place, your motive's in a good place, the temptation won't work. So yes, yeah, the temptation is there, but you fought through it. And God is so faithful that he helped you fight through it. And this is why God always tells us, evaluate your heart, evaluate your mind. Don't be so prideful and egotistical to where you don't even know when you're wrong. You know, don't be so pride, prideful and egotistical that you don't even like correction because a fool doesn't like correction, right? And you want to be so authentic you want to be so blameless you want to be so you can't be perfect even though we have to try to be we're not going to be but we could try to be but you want to be so attentive to your spirit attentive to your discernment to the point where you will receive correction from yourself as in when you know that you're wrong about something and you correct yourself like, girl, you know you're wrong. Or, or boy, you know you're wrong. Why are you even thinking this way? Why are you even feeling this way about this person? You accept your own correction. You get it? It's like you accept that correction. You're not prideful, too e egotistical to accept that correction. Even when God corrects you. Because most of the times when we are like, man, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have said that. That's conviction too. That's us being convicted. So you may say it to yourself, but that's God speaking to you, speaking to your spirit, speaking to your soul. And you're just receiving that. It's almost like you're receiving that revelation in the moment, the physical. Like I tell you guys all the time, everything that's given to you is given to you in spirit first. So even when God gives you revelation, it is given to you in spirit first. So your spirit will, will receive the revelation before the physical does. But your physical will catch on later on. And then, you know, it's like that's how people, their conscience will start to kind of eat at them when they're wrong about something. Because it's almost like God has convicted their spirit. Their spirit receives the conviction first. And then their conscience is like eating them up. And then their physical is like receiving the revelation. Their physical is like, okay, I don't feel good in my spirit about what I said and what I did. You get what I'm saying? So the point of me saying this is... Mm. Some of you guys, God is going to take you to a whole nother level. Whole nother level. As in your life is going to change. However, God wants to ensure that your heart is in the right place before he takes you there. There's something the Holy Spirit mentioned to me, and I mentioned this to you guys before, and it always, it just, it, when God mentions certain things to you, it's going to always stick with you. God said, your spiritual eyes are far more important than fame. Your spiritual eyes are far more important than fame. 
some of you guys, God is going to take it to a whole nother level. But he wants you to understand the importance of your discernment, your spiritual eyes, the importance of operating through your gift appropriately, navigating through your gift respons responsibly rather than just giving you what it is that you're you're wanting and what you're requesting, what you're praying for. And you have no training. You have no navigation. You have no compass to navigate through your gifts. And he does not want you to fail any temptations that may be thrown your way. Because he expects better from you as his child he wants better from you so it's not that god does not want to bless you right away some of you guys it's because he is training you he is teaching you and he wants to make sure that everything within you is right everything within you is correct everything within you is right your heart your motives your soul everything about you is in the right direction because this is how people receive a lot and they become very boastful this is how they receive a lot and they don't be, they're not humble this is how they receive a lot and they end up turning cold turning evil i'm going to give you an example of this okay i mentioned this already to those on my patreon and in the members groups but i said literally i said to everybody i'm like i know exactly how to blow up my channel i know exactly how to bring so much people to my channel i know exactly how to grow my subscriber count i know exactly how to get a lot of views i everybody on youtube knows how to do that and in order for that to happen you would have to sell out which means that you would have to make topics based on what is trending because people like to hear about drama people like to hear about fights they like to hear about alter altercations they like to hear about drama and most of the times it's the negativity that's trending rather than positivity right and a lot of people will jump on board with anything that is controversial they will jump on board because it's going to bring a lot of views it's going to bring a lot of um, traffic. It's going to bring a lot of that because why? It's trending. It's controversial. It's what is in. It's what a lot of people are focused on in the current moment. So a lot of people jump on what people are stuck on in the present moment or focused on not stuck on but focused on in the present moment and a lot of even a lot of a lot of people do this gossip channels different channels do this but even a lot of ministry channels they will milk controversial topics they will milk it because it's what's trending and everybody wants to know about it so but they will try to twist it and and pretend like god wants them to speak on it when it's not god wanting them to speak on it it's them wanting to speak on it because it's controversial and they're jumping on the opportunity and most of the time that's what causes a lot of problems because it ends up turning into gossip it ends up turning into drama it ends up turning into back and forth and bickering and altercations because they want to jump on something that is controversial and it brings a lot of views for example if there's a certain celebrity that's releasing an album and that celebrity has a lot of fans people will jump on that topic because why that specific celebrity is trending her or his album has been released and it's the perfect time to speak about that person and make it seem like god is saying let's speak about that person right so a lot of people will sell out and all you have to do is mention topics and views that's going to bring a lot of views which is whatever is trending but if there's a specific topic of someone that's out there who's famous and who has a lot of fans and a lot of people are caught up in the drama surrounding this particular person who's a public figure or well known everyone's focused on the specific type of drama that's going on around this person a gossip channel will talk about them a ministry will talk about them and say god said to talk about it and a ministry channel will even use scripture and manipulate scripture to benefit the topic in order to benefit them 
but the motive behind them talking about the person is not because God told them to. The motive behind it is it's trending. It's for views. And that's what I mean when I say your spiritual eyes are far more important than fame because some people instead of seeing things from a spiritual standpoint understanding what's really battling in the spiritual you know and really just seeing okay this is what's going on in the spiritual people are quick to just jump on what's trending jump on what's popular to get their views and stuff right so their main focus is fame their main focus is to go viral their main focus is views they're gonna milk the opportunity when it's popular when it's controversial because that's what's gonna bring them a lot of engagement because it's fresh it's not an old topic it's fresh right so that motive behind it is is for gain for greed for all that right so when your motives are not right god can definitely remove certain opportunities but that's why you'll you'll know when certain people are are selling out because they will consistently do the same thing it's no longer talking about what god wants them to talk about it's no longer talking about personal things that affect people personally it's now talking about whatever is trending that's what it comes down to whatever is trending so i had to use that as an example okay because that's what happens a lot a person whose motives are right or mo and motives are true they're not going to jump on whatever is controversial they're going to speak on whatever it is that god tells them to speak on the motive is not going to be, okay, I'm going to try to get views and clicks and, and views and likes and blow my channel up. I want fame. The motive will be, I'm only going to talk about what God tells me to talk about. And if he doesn't tell me to talk about anything, I'm not going to talk about anything. The motive is, I want to do whatever is according to his will. The motive is totally different. Right? And whenever you follow what God wants you to do, and the motive is different, the motives are pure, the motives are good, there will be longevity in results. And even if it looks like everybody else is on top and you're still stuck at a certain level or you're not moving anywhere, your integrity will have longevity, right? Whatever you're doing, because there's integrity, there will be longevity behind it. And two months from now a year from now two weeks from now two years from now you may surpass the people who so, who chose to sell out and to chase what's going to bring them popularity what's going to bring them fame rather than just stick to their integrity and work and focus on what god wants them to do right so that happens a lot that happens a lot and the point of me saying this is God is going to change many of your lives. But what happens is many of you guys, you don't understand it. But your hunger for attention, your hunger for popularity, your hunger for fame, your hunger for wanting to be on top, it surpasses the hunger of wanting to do what God wants you to do. It's almost like it defeats the purpose of your purpose because your motive and your hunger is elsewhere so god has to train you has to help you stay in alignment with him stay in alignment for his plans for you so when he does bring what he is that he is bringing into you it was never your main focus it's a blessing it's more than what you even thought that you were gonna get because the motives behind you doing what you're doing is good and there's integrity and you and and now God is blessing you with more. See if God was to just give you fame, give you riches, give you wealth, give you everything that you want to be comfortable and not even that. I'm talking I'm talking about that specifically, but the same thing goes for relationship. If God was to just give you your husband or your wife now and you're idolizing the man and you're not you know what I mean? You're idolizing the man and your motive is to be with him and, and want to or be with her and want to settle down. But now there's like, it's almost like the importance of being with that man or being with that woman is far more important now than the purpose that God had for has for the both of you guys as to why he brought you guys together to begin with. 
it's like that focus is now no longer on the calling for that you guys have but the focus is more on just wanting to be with the person and you get what i'm saying so god wants you guys to stay in alignment with what he has for you his plans for you and he does not want you to go far ahead to where now your motives change and he's trying to show you he's trying to train you he's trying to teach you discipline he's trying to teach you integrity he's trying to teach you to be content with what you have now before he gives you what it is that he's going to give you because he wants to ensure that when he does give you what it is that he's going to give you and he takes you to where he's going to take you your heart is not going to change your motives are not going to change your integrity is not going to change you get what i'm saying like you're still going to have that hunger for him that hunger that thirst for him you're still going to have that you're still going to have that pure heart so a lot of people if they receive what they want they want from god now they will change their heart will change their motives will change they will no longer be that humble person right you have to remember that god knows our ways more than we know our ways god knows our motives our intentions god knows what we would do had he put us in a situation now he knows the outcome of that he knows what's going to happen so sometimes there's a certain place in a spiritual maturity that you have to be at first before he can open that door for you and bring in what he's going to bring in for you because he is not trying to tempt you he is trying to help you get out of temptation when it happens and he is trying not to put you in a position to where you are tempted more than what you can bear that's one of the reasons why god does take his time to bless some people because some people he expects better from them and he does not want you to be tempted beyond what you can bear so it's all about discipline it's all about integrity it's all about the motives behind things right and god does not want you to lose sight of the reasoning as to why he's going to put you in that position in the first place but it's all about your heart all about your heart he wants to make sure that your heart is in the right place and let me let me give you another example because this also connects to your spiritual gifts the gifts some of you guys are like okay i want to be on this level spiritually i want to be able to do this i want to be able to have visions i want to be able to be in the spirit i want to be able to do this but if your heart isn't clean your heart's not in the right place and god was to graduate you and bring you to that level as his child you may end up using your gifts for the wrong reasons you see what i'm saying like you your heart if your heart is not 100 percent where god needs it to be you won't be responsible with certain gifts that he wants to give you the responsibility won't be there then what will happen is now you're going to be irresponsible with your gifts now you're spying on people, you're monitoring people, or now you're tempted because your heart's not right. Now you're tempted to do witchcraft on certain people because you have access to certain things. Do you see how careful God is? Because you are his chosen, you are, you are his anointed, you are the one that is precious to him. He has to make sure that you're going through the right amount of training, that you are equipped enough, that your heart is in the right place. He does not want you to be in a position to where you're tempted beyond what you can bear because if you're saying god i want to have the gift of prophecy god i want to have the gift of to see in the spirit but your heart isn't even right how can i give you the gift of prophecy how can i give you the gift to see in the spirit if your heart isn't even right how your heart isn't even right if i give you the gift of prophecy and there is someone that surrounds you that you don't like, that you envy, and you can see their prophecy, and you won't give it to them. You won't deliver it to them. Why won't you deliver it to them? Because you have envy in your heart. You have jealousy in your heart. Your heart ain't right. Your heart ain't right. So I'm not going to put you in a position to where you are tempted beyond what you can bear, and now you are misusing your gifts. You are misleading with your gifts. You are not responsible with your gifts. And then you're like, but God, there's people out there who are, you know, other Christians out there who are who are evil and they have they have a jealous heart and they're not right. And, you know, they have these gifts. 
okay, but my plan for you is not the plan that I have for them. And there's a reason why these people are still stuck. They're still behind. They're not progressing. They're not elevating. Because you are chosen. I have higher expectations from you. There's a reason why I chose you. I don't want you to be stuck. I don't want you to be so tempted that beyond your means that you fail and now you're stuck and you can't elevate. So I would rather put you through discipline and training before I elevate you in this area and that area. God understands our ways more than we understand our ways. God understands what temptations are ahead. God understands what we can bear and what we can't bear. And sometimes, because there's certain things you cannot bear, he will not allow you to go through the, to the next chapter of your life until you are equipped enough to do that. If your heart ain't right and you're envying someone because they're moving in life, they're progressing, and you hate them, you dislike them, you're bitter towards them, that means that when God blesses you, you're going to have that same heart when he blesses you. Whatever heart you have right now is whatever heart you're going to still have when he blesses you. You know that? Whatever heart you have right now is whatever heart you're going to still have if he upgrades you in your gifts. So this is why working on yourself is so important. This is why obedience is important. This is why not being afraid to, to take accountability is important. That confirms your integrity. That confirms that even when you're wrong about something, you're not afraid to hold yourself accountable. You're not afraid to say, okay, I got to change. So if you have the type of heart that takes accountability, so if you know you're doing something wrong and you feel some type of way and you're not enabling it, you're saying, okay, I got to stop doing this. Or I got to opt to not think like that. I can't feel this way about this person. That means that when God blesses you and puts you in a certain position, when you're wrong about something, you're going to correct yourself. So he knows that you're bringing along that integrity into the new chapter of your life. If you're on level two and you want to go to level three, but you you have not worked on your heart, you have not worked on yourself, and there's envy, there's slander, there's maliciousness within you, means if God takes you to the next level, you're going to bring all of that with you. You're going to bring all of that unhealed baggage with you. And if you bring all that unhealed baggage with you, that means that you will be you will be tempted beyond what you can bear. See, when you start to work on yourself, heal yourself, and eat, like I said, you're not perfect. But when you take accountability for certain things that you're not afraid to, God knows that when he takes you to the next level of your life and you receive breakthroughs after breakthroughs, he knows you're taking that accountability with you. Do you get it? So that means he can trust you with what he's going to give you. He can trust you with the upgrades. Oh, well, God, there's some people out there who are who are receiving breakthroughs and they're mean, they're evil, they're bitter. They're, they're... God says, do not envy the wicked because you're not like them. Why would... If you envy them, you're, you're going to be just like them. So if you envy the wicked, you will, you will be no different from them. God says, do not envy the wicked. Even if they are in a good position. Because he expects better from you. He expects greater from you. Because you are his child. You are his chosen precious precious possession. So he expects more from you. What, remember something. Whatever baggage you have. That you have not dealt with on this level. Remember, if God blesses you, you're going to take that to the next level. So if your heart ain't clean, if your heart ain't right, if your mind ain't right, you hating on someone else because they're doing good, you dislike someone else because they're doing good or because they look good, you're trying to sabotage someone else because of that. God knows that if he was to give you something today and he was to reward you despite your bad behavior, you're taking all of that with you to the next level. And he don't want that accountability 
confirms integrity. Accountability confirms responsibility. When you are not afraid to be accountable, when you are not afraid to correct yourself or receive correction, you are going to be trusted to go into the next level. You are ready to go into the next level. This is why a lot of Christians, a lot of people that claim to love God, because not all of them love God, but this is why you see a lot of people who are stagnant and stuck is because they don't want to work on themselves. They don't want to correct themselves when they're wrong. They don't want to take accountability. They don't want to heal. A lot of pride and ego, I'm always right, you're always wrong type of vibes, type of energy they're putting out even when they know they're wrong. And that is someone that God cannot trust to be responsible enough with certain assignments. And that's why he gives some certain assignments. And that's why some people, they have a higher calling and more responsibility and more assignments because God understands that they do not lack accountability. God understands that they correct, they receive correction, they accept it. They, their hearts are open. Their hearts are pure. Their hearts are good. So God can trust them with higher assignments, responsibility. Let me ask you a question. When you see someone elevating in their life, ask yourself this question. Do you hate on them? Do you think bad about them? Do you think bad about them and validate your thoughts? by looking for a reason to confirm your thoughts? Or do you pray for them and say, God, whatever you have blessed them with, I pray they maintain it. I pray they maintain it, God. That woman that just got married, God, I pray her marriage lasts. A man that just got promoted, God, I pray his promotion lasts. That man or that woman who's bought a house, God, I pray they maintain that house. Do you pray for people when you see that they're blessed? Do you pray for them to maintain that blessing? Do you pray for them to keep being blessed? Do you pray that their success continues to rise? Or do you evil eye them? Do you wish you had what they had? Do you wish it was you instead of them? Do you envy them? Do you say, why him, why her? Because what people don't understand is these types of thoughts are witchcraft. You know that, right? These types of thoughts are witchcraft. When you look at someone and say, oh, I wish I had what they had, you're basically rebuking and praying against what they have for themselves. When you say, God, why her? Why why him? Why not me? You're, you're basically putting projecting out there that you wish it was you instead of them when you spy on someone in hopes that they fail in hopes they have a downfall wanting to see if they're doing better than you wanting to see if they fell yet if things are falling apart yet and waking up every day wishing and hoping that That is a modern spirit and what you are doing is witchcraft. You know that? You are manifesting a spirit. You are manifesting a spirit. And if you keep doing it, you keep feeding that spirit, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Thoughts are powerful, words are powerful. When you say, I wish that was me blessed and not them, you're cursing them. You know that? See, a lot of people don't understand that these types of thoughts, these types of feelings, that is witchcraft. That is cursing someone. So if you say, okay, I'm a child of God and I want to go to level 5, God. I want to go to level 10, God. God is looking at you like, I want to take you there. I want you to be blessed. I want you to come out of poverty. 
I want you to receive greatness. I want you to, to meet your person. But if you have this type of heart now, if you have these types of thoughts and these types of motives now, if I give you what I'm supposed to give you, you're going to take that with you. You're going to take that with you. And, and, and let me tell you how many Christians are stuck because of this. Because there's Christians out there who do love God, who do pray, who do fast, but their heart's not, their heart's not right. And the devil won't, the devil won't give them what they want. The devil won't present an opportunity to them because the devil knows they're, they're working for God. The devil knows their heart is with God. Even if their heart isn't right fully, their heart is with God, which means once they, if they do receive a breakthrough or if they do receive a, some type of upgrade in their life, they're going to be serving God and the devil doesn't like that. So the devil won't even give them what he gives evil people. But then again, God won't give it to them either because their heart ain't clean. Do you see that? See, when there's evil people progressing in their life and they're elevating, the devil can give rewards too. He can. The devil can open doors of rewards for those who are doing evil because he knows that when they receive these rewards from him, from him their heart is still going to be evil. They're still going to be wicked even when they're rich, even when they're wealthy. They're still going to be wicked. In fact, they have the means now to do more evil. You see that? But when it's a child of God whose heart isn't right, the devil knows that if there was a reward presented to you, you're not going to work for him. Regardless, you're not going to work for him. Even if your heart isn't all the way there, you're not going to work for him. He knows you're going to work for God. And he knows you're going to give God all the glory, even if he's the one that presents that reward to you. But God also won't give you that reward, that breakthrough, until your heart is clean. So you see how a person... Who loves God but they're not right in the heart and mind how they can be stuck how they can be oppressed based on their unclean heart do you see that that's why most of the times you'll see a person who is evil they're prospering but you'll see a person who is good in the heart is also prospering but those who they have these types of thoughts where they're cursing people without knowing it. Their heart's not clean. They're projecting negativity out there. But they're not like physically doing evil. That's why you'll see them not being able to move and being oppressed. Because God will not take you to the next level. Unless he knows he can trust you at that next level. Because he won't put you in a position to where you're tempted to work. You're tempted further than what you can bear so now you have to stay where you are until you completely work on yourself and put the pride aside and heal right I already know what God showed me I'm trying to articulate it in a way where people can understand it the devil can give rewards and God can give rewards but God wants longevity of purity integrity the devil wants longevity of evil you get what I'm saying I wanted to explain that to you guys. I love you guys. And just really think about what I'm saying. Okay, bye.